John, it is time. We're going to bring you in. I just wanted I wanted to start with this. I actually wrote this yesterday morning. I've been thinking a lot about this, uh, this whole thing about interest rates, and I wanted to build on something that Tom just said. Evan, if you just go back to the headline there, I just want to read it. Um, there you go. A uh, 10-year Treasury yield is bouncing off major support. You know, you all, we all know that uh, bond yields have plunged all over the world over the last year, and that has caused a lot of concerns about the global economy and the American economy. Um, and the whole point of this is to show that we're, we're, uh, we're bouncing off major support. Also, the bond stock ratio has run into resistance. I'll show you a second. Uh, and that suggests that um, the pendulum may switch back to stocks now. That would favor stocks over bonds. Also, recent sector rotations show a shift to more economically sensitive stock groups while bond proxies weaken. What I'm trying to say there is that um, there's been a lot of concern in the market with falling interest rates uh, and money has been in defensive sectors, a lot of defensive sectors. If, if I'm right and if bond yields start to stabilize here and bounce a bit, that could be that could explain a lot of the rotations uh, that are going on right now. But let's go to the first chart there. Uh, this is uh, chart one. This is the yeah, this is the this is the ten year treasury yield. This was plotted yesterday morning, but nothing has changed since then. It's the TNX, and as you know, as I mentioned, all over the world yields are negative in Europe and Asia. The the thirty year yield uh, recently hit a record low, but this is this is uh, one that I'm following, and I think a lot of people. This is the real benchmark that I think a lot of people really follow. And you can see this is a monthly chart. It's very simple. It shows the uh, the recent, the plunge that really took place uh, since the end of last year from over 3% to under 2%. But the point of the chart is simply that we have come down to the lows uh, that were formed uh, in uh, 2016, 2012. It's been pointed out many times, by the way, the record low in this thing was set in... Um, middle of 216 we're just below 14 so we're just above that so just looking at the chart here it looks to me like this is a logical spot for the yield to start bouncing a little bit I, i'm not bold enough to say this is the bottom or it's the beginning of the major upturn but i do think that the fact that we've come down into major support suggests that this decline has been overdone uh, it's very oversold at the very least i think bond yields may start to bounce from here maybe they'll just trade sideways for a while, but it suggests to me that this uh, this downturn in bond yields is overdone for now. Uh, and by the way, the, the line in the box just below that, this is the nine month RSI. We use that to determine overbought and oversold areas. And you can see that little circle down at the bottom here. The RSI is at the most oversold level in, uh, in more than a decade. So that, that kind of feeds into the idea that not only are we in an area of major support, and we're very, very oversold. So it just tells me that bond yields are, are overdone here. And I think we're going to bounce around here a little bit. And I'm not saying this may be the bottom. I don't know. I, I can't say that. But I do think that uh, this has been overdone. And if I'm right on that, by the way, that's going to change uh, a lot of a lot of perceptions on the market. Uh, but before, before we get to that, let's move to the next chart. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. Uh, let's, let's continue with this. This is... Uh, what I'm doing, I do a lot of ratio analysis. I know Tom does, uh, all, everybody does a lot of this, uh, combining two asset classes in this particular case. TLT, that is the 20-year uh, the Treasury bond ETF. It's the longest maturity that we have. And that has done extremely well this year. In fact, it's done better than stocks. This particular chart is a ratio of the TLT, which is the long bond ETF, divided by the SPY, which is the S&P 500 spider. And you can see, for example, uh, during the fourth quarter of last year, when the ratio spiked, that took place when stocks lost almost 20% and money rotated into bonds. Uh, we all know what happened then. And uh, it's a flight to safety. But the ratio fell during the first half of the year as the stock market recovered. The Fed started lowering interest rates. Money moved out of bonds and back into stocks. Right around the end of April, the beginning of May, when some of these tariff concerns started to develop, we've noticed that bonds have started to do much better than stocks. We saw that during May and June. We had a stock sell-off during May. But really, the, the, the most dramatic part there was late July, early August. You can see a real spike. Again, tariff concerns. 
And as you know, the stock market sold off during August. During this whole period of time, bond yields were just plunging all over the world. But the point of this chart is simply to show that bonds have been doing much better than stocks over the last couple of months. But just applying some very, very simple chart analysis, we are right up against the highs that were formed at the end of last year. You can see the two circles. And that to me is a resist, looks like a chart resistance. It's just a very simple, basic analysis. Suggests to me that the, um, the rotation into bonds, I won't even say out of stocks, but rotation into bonds has been overdone here. And it looks like it's starting to weaken a little bit. So again, it feeds into the idea that, um, that bond prices have probably rallied too far relative to stocks. And as you can see, they're starting to slide. Uh, they've slid over the last week. So bonds are now doing, have done much better than stocks over the last week. And again, uh, that also feeds, it, feeds into the rotation. Not only are stocks starting to do better than bonds, but money is starting to come out of bond proxies like uh, consumer staples, utilities, and REITs. They've been market leaders for the last few months. Uh, they're starting to weaken a little bit. And again, if I'm right on this, this would also support a move into more economically sensitive areas of the market, which we're beginning to see. But uh, Aaron, if we could move down to just the next chart, and I'll finish up with this little treatise here. I just, I got carried away with this. I just wanted to take a longer term view of this. This is the same ratio, TLT, which is the long bond ETF divided by the uh, S&P spider. And I've gone back to the last 10 years, basically. And I, I've drawn a trend line in there. Uh, you can see uh, pretty much contains most of the peaks of the last, uh, of the last uh, 10 years. And I just wanted to make the case that this recent upturn in the bond stock ratio is right up against the trend line going back 10 years, which also kind of supports the view that this rotation into bonds is very much overdone. We, I'm not saying we've seen the end of it, but I think it's overdone for now. And I think we're going to see uh, somewhat of a retracement. So all of which suggests that the decline in bond yields, the rally in bonds is, is somewhat overdone. And I think we're gonna see some retracements of that. That's basically good for stocks, I think, but uh, it's also, it also tells us a lot about sector rotations. So if we'll continue moving down uh, to the next chart, uh, I just wanted to comment on this, uh, the idea of sector rotations. The, the, um, the first chart there, chart four, this simply shows the sectors, I went back over the last year, uh, just to show what has been happening. Remember, bonds have done better than stocks for most of this year. Okay, but look at where their leadership has been over the last 12 months, real estate, utilities, and consumer staples. That is, those are, those are defensive groups for one thing, but more importantly, these are dividend paying stocks. When bond yields are falling, and remember they started falling during the fourth quarter of last year. When bond yields are falling, uh, money does tend to, investors are looking for yield. So within the stock market, they move into the highest yielding sectors, which are staples, utilities, and, uh, and what's the other one, REITs. So I think that there's been a lot of concern about moving into defensive sectors. I think in this case, it's more a matter of investors just looking for yield. The fact that they're safe uh, is maybe secondary. Technology stocks also had a pretty good, uh, pretty good year. We'll, we'll come back to that. But if you look at the bottom of the chart, you can see what's been lagging behind. Energy stocks have been very weak. That's because of very, very weak, uh, um, Oil group, material stocks have been very weak. They're very much, they're very closely tied to economically sensitive commodities like aluminum and copper. So weakness in energy and weakness in materials is a sort of um, a sign that investors are concerned about uh, the health of the global economy. But also look at a couple of the others there, financials, industrials, uh, laggards. They, they've been laggards over the last year. Financial stocks do not do well in a climate of falling interest rates. And of course, industrials are very economically sensitive. So you can see that over the last year, the, the rotations have favored bond proxies, defensive stocks. They've kind of stayed away from uh, financials and uh, economically sensitive stocks. Now, if you go down to the last chart, uh, the point of this is I did this yesterday. So there have been already been a couple of changes in this. I just wanted to show that over the last week, uh, everyone's been talking about these rotations, and I just wanted to show it graphically. Again, this was done yesterday morning. There have been a couple of changes. 
energy right off the bat is at the top of the list. You know, energy got off to a very strong start. That's going to probably fall off very quickly because, as you know, energy stocks are taking a hit today. But the, but the ones I really want to focus on are financials. Remember, financials and industrials have been two of the weakest groups over the last year. Financials and industrials are now two of the strongest groups. Financials, um, financials are very sensitive to the bounce in bond yields. The minute bond yields started bouncing last week, and they bounced almost a quarter of a point, believe it or not, uh, financial stocks have done very, very well. So they've gone from market laggards to market leaders. Bank stocks in particular are extremely sensitive to bond yields. So if bond yields are bottoming here or at least stabilizing or at least starting to bounce, uh, that should be very, very good for financial stocks. And by the way, financial stocks are the biggest part of the value universe. So when people are talking about this rotation into value, it's mainly financial stocks. Now, industrials are right below that. Uh, industrials have also done very, very well. Uh, I showed a chart last night, and I think Tom showed one this morning, of the industrial spider, XLI, is right up against its old highs. This is the fifth time in the last, uh, I don't know, 18 months that we're testing that level, and it looks like we're going to go through it. And industrial stocks, very economically sensitive. They do include a lot of uh, trade-sensitive stocks uh, that, that did very well yesterday. But I also want to point out that, that in the XLI, transportation stocks are a big part of that. And as uh, we've, we've all, a lot of us have been showing, transportation stocks have done extremely well over the last week or two. They've been one of the strongest uh, parts of the stock market. And that has had a lot to do with the rally in industrial stocks also. So financials, industrials, and by the way, I, I think I've already mentioned small caps. Uh, within the small cap universe, um, small cap value is where the biggest gains have taken place this week. And 30% of that is financials. So this big surge in the small cap universe that we've seen this week, and I hope it continues, I think it will, has a lot to do with the surge in financial stocks. Just to repeat, the, the, uh, the Russell 2000 value uh, ETF, which the symbol is IWN, 30%, 29.8% of it is financial stocks. So you can credit the, um, the, uh, the rally in financial stocks has a lot to do with the rally in small caps, which has a lot to do with the rebound in interest rates. If you look at the bottom of the chart, you go down to, now again, this is, uh, has changed a little bit over the last day or two, but I just want to point out REITs, REITs have been the weakest part of the, uh, you remember over the last year, REITs were the strongest. They're now the weakest. Remember, these are the dividend paying stocks. If, if bond yields are starting to bounce, and it looks like they are, these are the groups that you should expect to see profit taking in real estate stocks, utilities, and even consumer staples. And we are beginning to see some of that. So there is there is a sort of a rotation going on uh, within the stock market. And I think the key to it is the fact that uh, bond yields may be scraping bottom here. Also bear in mind that um, that decline, I'm, I don't want to sound like an economist, but uh, the uh, that decline in bond yields has increased concerns about a slowdown in the global economy. and. If bond yields start to bounce, I think that would relieve some of those concerns and might encourage investors to uh, to put some money uh, back into the more uh, aggressive sectors of the stock market, more economically sensitive. And I might mention, uh, I think Tom mentioned this before, as you know, the ECB lowered interest rates this morning again, and uh, they announced a new bond buying program, and bond yields in the U.S. and Europe opened sharply lower, as you would expect but they are bouncing right now. Bond yields are up right now. So I found that very interesting. Even, even the Euro, the currency markets, the Euro dropped very sharply. In fact, it hit a multi-year low this morning on that ECB easing. But last time I looked, it was having a big upside reversal then. So it could very well be that uh, a lot of this, we know what the ECB was going to do, and most of us have a pretty good idea of what the Fed is going to do. I think a lot of this is baked into the market. So this idea that Bond yields are going to keep dropping because in, because east, uh, in, uh, central bankers are easing. I think a lot of that is, is baked into the cake at this particular point. So, hey, John. Hey, John. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Tom, go ahead. Um, first of all, you're a mind reader. I literally had jotted down a question about the ECB and what they were doing and how that might impact the Fed. And as soon as I 
uh, turned the mic on to ask you a question. You went into it. I was like, wow, that was, that was pretty good. You must have been uh, reading my mind. I had a feeling you were thinking about that, Tom. I just had a feeling. <laughs> so as far as the, um, the Fed, of course, they meet next week. And with the ECB lowering or cutting the rate and deposit rates and, and you know, more bond buying, more QE, um, what do you think that sets up for the Fed next week? Do you think that that puts pressure on them, them to lower again with everyone? Well, I, uh, I think it does. I think it does, Tom, because, um, well, well, let, let's put it this way. It does in the sense that, you know, we can't allow the foreign central bank to keep lowering interest rates. And we don't because that would strengthen the dollar and we don't we don't want that so i i think the general feeling is the fed will ease by about a quarter of a point uh when i looked today that was about a 90 percent chance of uh, fed funds futures were predicting about an 89 percent chance of a quarter point what they do after that i don't know it is interesting i'm sure the fed is watching markets very closely today because the last thing that they would want to see is the euro plunge to a multi-year low because the euro has the biggest impact on the dollar, that would push the dollar sharply higher. The fact that the euro seems to be turning up today, is that the dollar was actually down on the day. So that may, uh, that may uh, take a little pressure off the Fed. But I think that a quarter point cut is probably uh, what we're gonna see next week. Yeah, one, one other thing too that uh, has seemed to reverse with, with the 10 year treasury yield moving up like it has, is we've gone from that yield um, inversion uh, from a slightly negative, I'm talking about the 10 year versus the two year. And now it's been on the rise now for the last couple of weeks. And we're no longer in that inverted uh, yield curve. Any thoughts on that? I mean, that obviously is, obviously is helping the financials as well. You're absolutely right, You're absolutely right Tom. So and I, I have, I've written a little bit on this and I, I have to admit, I, I'm a little skeptical of, uh, skeptical of this inverted yield curve. I, I, I did write an article a couple of weeks ago saying this time could be different, with, which is the worst thing you could ever say. But uh, because, you know, historically, whenever we've had an inverted yield curve, every, t every uh, time I've seen this in the last 70 years or so that I've studied, every time we've had an inverted yield curve, it's because the, uh, the Federal Reserve has raised short-term interest rates to combat inflation. We're not seeing that this time. This, this time, uh, and so as a result, short-term rates rise faster than long-term rates, and we get an inverted yield curve. This time, nothing's going up. They're all going down. This time, it's not, it's not a question of short-term rates going up. It's a question of long-term rates falling faster. I've never seen that before. And I think a lot of this is being caused by the central bankers themselves. Uh, the EC, all, all these economies of the ECB today just going deeper into negative territory. You know, this has never before, been done before in history. <laughs> you know, they're flying blind. They, they have, they have no, no uh, workbook to go to. So I think these central bankers just keep going negative and negative, and they're pulling our rates down. And I think this is distorting the yield curve. So uh, I'm a little skeptical of that whole inverted yield curve thing. But you are right. It is encouraging to see that uh, long-term rates are back above short-term rates. Yeah, and I, I just think that there's no denying the fact that with bond yields negative in so many parts around the world, that there's a lot of money that's coming into the U.S. because we do have, you know, among the highest yields uh, worldwide. So I think all of that money that's coming in that's leaving foreign uh, treasuries is, I, I don't want to say that it's temporarily sending our yields lower, but it kind of is, in my opinion, sending our yields lower because of the, all of a sudden, the surge in treasury buying. And I don't know that that's an indication that we're looking at a weaker economy ahead. I mean, if you look at the jobs and the and the um, rate of change in jobs, we almost always see that begin to roll over before a recession. I would say, actually, we always see it roll over before a recession. And I'm not seeing that. So I'm kind of in that same camp with you. I don't I think this time is different. And I hate saying that as well. But I see I see almost a bubble type scenario with all of the bond buying that's been going on around the world what happens as we've seen here in the last couple of weeks what happens if that money begins to come out of treasuries and starts to move back into equities i i think we look we're looking at a rally ahead i just that's just my opinion well that that's my point to come back to this that if bond yields are bottoming here and i i think they are i'm not saying a big upturn but i think we're, we're seeing the bottom for now um i think that um a lot of money has gone into bond prices over the last six to nine months. 
I think some of that money is going to start coming out. And where is it going to go? Uh, some of it may go into gold. I don't know. But I think a lot of it will move back into the stock market. So I think the pendulum for now, for the time being, is going to shift away from bonds uh, back to stocks. And I think not just stocks, but within the stock market, I think it's going to move out of these defensive uh, bond proxies. And I think it's going to start moving into the more economically sensitive areas. And two that, I, that I've mentioned already this week that I'm really focused on are, I mentioned the financials and I mentioned industrials. And by the way, just to come back to the small cap thing, now I'm kind of pre-associating here. I'm looking at the, uh, the Russell 2000 value index, which really exploded this week. Uh, the two biggest groups in that, I already mentioned financials, just a shade under 30%. Industrials are the second biggest, let's say 13%. So financials and industrials are the biggest part of the, the value universe. Okay. And I think that's, uh, so money's beginning to flow into that area. And I think it's a sign of some, some optimism. And I also think, you know, we have been complaining for months, all of us, that the weakness in tech, uh, transportation stocks, the weakness in um, small cap stocks. Now we're starting to see them rally. And by the way, they are economically sensitive. Uh, the, the transportation sector is very sensitive to the U.S. economy, and that's been very, very strong over the last two or three weeks. And small cap stocks are, are domestic-oriented stocks. So if bond yields are starting to rally here and the yield curve uh, strengthens, okay, we get away from this recession talk, people become a little more confident. I think they'll start moving money into these more economically sensitive areas. So I think it's a good sign. Yeah, I would just throw in there, too, you mentioned the transports, trucking uh, breaking out almost to a 52-week high now. Uh, can't hurt either. Exactly. Very. These are all, uh, you know, the old the old Dow theory. Uh, you want the Dow industrials and the transports to be moving in the same direction. They have not been moving in the same. They've been moving in opposite directions this year. Uh, you know, the industrial companies make the goods. This is the whole Dow theory. And the transport, the transport companies, the rails and the truckers, they move the goods. So they should be moving in, in the same direction. And right now they seem to be. Mm -hmm. Agreed. All right. Uh, what else you got for us? Uh, let's go back to, uh, let's go back to the, you have the market message list there or. Okay. Since Tom mentioned transports, we may as well look at it. Absolutely. Pictures worth at the thousand words, Aaron, as you know, you know, you could just show these pictures and play music and people would probably get the same idea. Um, I wrote this. I know I'm not the first one. A lot of us have been writing about this. Uh, uh, the blue bars, uh, the, <laughs> the black bars, yeah, that's the Dow Jones transports. And as you know, they've been lagging. By the way, that, okay, you can see the chart. See that that solid line on that chart? Uh, we have the blue, uh, the, uh, the blue logo. That's the Dow transports divided by the Dow industrials. That's a relative strength ratio. And you can see how weak the transports have been relative to the industrials, and that's not a good sign. But if you look to the far right over the last uh, two weeks or so, the transports have really erupted. They bounced off their June low. This chart is through Monday, um, but I, I looked at it and we are, I looked at it today. We're right in the process of testing that trend line there drawn over the uh, April, July highs. You can see that we're stalling there a little bit, but I, I, have, a, I have a strong feeling we're gonna go through that because as Tom mentioned, trucking stocks, rail stocks, they're all, they're all beginning to look uh, Oh, there you go. Yeah. Actually, we're, we got above it yesterday. We pulled back and we're a teeny bit above it now. I think we're going to go through that. The chart just looks bullish to me. And when I look at uh, the stocks, that uh, Tom mentioned trucking stocks, uh, they're also looking very good. So this is an economically sensitive group. They've been lagging behind. Um, I, I'd be willing to bet if you put bond yields over that, you'd probably see a correlation. But anyway, that's a bit of a reach. So a transportation stock. So that would put transportation stocks back in sync with the uh, the Dow Industrials. And for the first time in several months, the transports are actually doing better than the utilities. And I think that's a very, very good sign. Um, Tom mentioned trucking stocks right on cue. Tom, you've been reading my stuff or have I been reading your <laughs> All right, you gave away my secret. Great. <laughs> <laughs> think a lot. Well, we we know how to read charts. That's the main thing. <laughs> this is uh, CHR Robinson Worldwide. You can see it breaking that trend line. Um, very nice. Uh, that's a very nice chart. If you go down a little bit further, you're going to see the same thing. Uh, JBHT. 
What I, I do, what Tom does, I look at the various groups, and when I looked earlier in the week, I looked at the Dow Jones, um, what do you call it, the trucking index, and it was it was breaking out to the upside. So I went to the individual stocks, and here they are: JBH Transport Services, another very nice breakout to the upside, and I think there's one more. Very good, Landstar, as you can see. Uh, also, uh, well. No, no, we don't have to be a shard expert to see these things. They're, they're obviously starting to rise. They're breaking through some major trend lines. And of course, trucking stocks are very closely tied to the economy because when people want to move goods around the country, they hire trucks, they hire rails, whatever. So this is a very good sign. Also, I just wanted to uh, show one more chart in this group, uh, Aaron. Uh, this is Kirby. Uh, this is something, the marine transportation. This is... Uh, this is a group I, I hardly ever look at. We always look at the airlines. We look at the rails, the trucks, the delivery service. This is something that, but it jumped out. It was the strongest, one of the strongest groups. And I looked beneath the surface and here's Kirby. I don't think I've ever shown a chart of this before. Uh, marine transportation. I'm not even sure I know what that means. It has something to do with ships, I guess. But uh, you can see Kirby turning up very sharply and had another very strong day yesterday. So these are all uh, doing very well. And then as long as we're on it, let's just go to the last two. Remember, this was written on Monday, so it's a little dated now. I just wanted to show that um, while we're beginning to see money moving into transportation stocks, notice that the utility stocks uh, are starting to break down. Bear in mind that over the last several months, utilities have been the strongest, transports have been the weakest, the fact that utilities are now, I'm not saying they're breaking down, but they're starting to weaken. That line along the top, by the way, that red line on the top there, chart six, that is a ratio of the utilities divided by the transports. And you can see utilities have been the dominant force, again, tied to falling bond yields, rising bond prices. Over the last week, I won't say a dramatic turn, but a very noticeable turn to the downside, that utilities are beginning to underperform transports that would seem to support the idea that bond yields might be bottoming here. And we're beginning to see a little bit of rotation out of bonds back into stocks. And then I think there's one more there right on the queue. I couldn't resist showing this because REITs and utilities move in the same direction. And for the same reasons, they're dividend paying stocks. And you can see that breaking down as well. And Aaron, I lied. I do have one more chart. I never, I never end on the number seven have one more. This is, I just, I don't know why I showed this. I just thought it was interesting. This was Monday. This is the Dow Jones composite at, at, uh, index average. This includes the three Dow averages. Uh, there were 30, let me see if I got this right, 30 industrials, 20 transports, and 15 utilities. And you can see it, it, it looks pretty much like the Dow chart. We bounced off the 200-day moving average back in August. Very nice. We rose above the 50-day uh, moving average last week, which is very nice. So it, it looks good, it looks positive, it looks like we're gonna test the highs, but the, the point I was trying to make in showing this chart is that beneath the surface, we know the industrials broke out last week, but what I found encouraging is that for the first time, utilities are not leading this higher. Utilities are a defensive group. It's being led higher by transportation stocks and industrial stocks at this point. And I thought that you can't see it on the chart, but beneath the surface, I think that that's a positive sign. All right, John, I can't let this go without asking this question. <laughs> uh, you said something about you don't end on chart seven. Is that, what is that all about? Well, when I'm writing, there is certain numbers I just don't like to end on. If, I, if I'm writing a message and I see I'm on chart seven, I have to put in it. I either have to erase a chart or put in a, put in a chart eight. I just can't, I can't end on, I can't end on numbers like seven or nine or 11. So I don't know why it's <laughs> Fib and I like ending on Fibonacci numbers, so eight is a good thing. There you go. That's what it is. A lot of subliminal messages here, uh, Tom. Now i got to adopt something else of yours. This is, uh, this is making it tough on me, John. <laughs> i got to stay one step ahead of you, Tom. I, I'm not saying I do it, but I try. <laughs> I know we've already held you longer than uh, we probably were supposed to, but uh, always a pleasure to have you on here, John, and uh, take care. Have a great rest of your week, and see you again soon. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Aaron. Yes, absolutely.